Uh, when I was a kid, my dad was active in his local VFW post leadership, and it was a day uh, to go to the cemetery, to the military memorials at the cemeteries, to have parades, uh, to have a crowd, uh, to have people around to honor the fallen and to remember their families as well. It's very different this year. It's very different, John. And for 25 years, TAPS has brought the families of America's fallen heroes to Arlington to participate in ceremonies with the president. But this year, things look very, very different. We held our national survivor seminar still with thousands of families across the country, but it was held virtually. And today, we have just a small group of our families here for this White House ceremony at Fort McHenry. Um, you have this experience born of sadness, but it is, it is such critical and heartwarming experience because you help the families of the fallen, the survivors, uh, people who need to get through their grief, people who need to find a sense of direction perhaps. And now you're trying to help people with COVID as well uh, who are dealing with this, whether it's frontline workers. Uh, walk us through some of those efforts. Grief is, is tremendously isolating, but there are resources available. We have a wonderful site at taps.org slash COVID that's available to absolutely everyone. We want people to know that they're not alone in their grief, that there is support available. Please check out that resource. It's got the Mourner's Bill of Rights. It has so many useful tools that will help all those who are grieving. But today, as we honor those who have paid the ultimate price for freedom, we stand with Americans who are struggling as well. And what are you learning? Obviously, you deal with this mainly with military families in the past. Uh, what new things are you learning? You mentioned how isolating grief can be. In this case, people are losing family members and they can't even say goodbye. That happens to many military families if the service man or woman is deployed overseas when that happens. Is there similarities and what are the differences? Absolutely, John. It, it, it's incredibly similar. You know, for military families, they have struggled with that separation, that, that anxiety of losing a loved one while being separated, much like people are experiencing now with COVID. But we let, we let our families know that they can recognize their grief, that they can have rituals. They may look differently, but they can honor the life lived. It's not about the moment or the manner of the death. And in our case, it's about the service given to this country. And today on Memorial Day, we remember and honor all those who have served and died for America. Uh, yes, we do. And it's important. Sometimes people are afraid to ask for help, especially if they come out of a culture of strength in the military. Uh, uh, talk to those who are at home, whether it's from a military family or somebody dealing with the coronavirus, if they think maybe you know, it's a sign of weakness to reach out and get the help that you can give them. No, it's, it's so important to reach out that our website at taps.org slash COVID slash together really lets folks know that they're not alone, that what they're feeling is completely normal and that they, uh, they can reach out for support even if it has to be physically distanced.